If you're spending four Canon lens, you should really, really be cognizant that you're buying something that's gonna last a long time and you're gonna be able to shoot for possibly decades. Engineers at Zeiss kind of all pulled together and tried to make the most interesting, creative piece of equipment they could make where they didn't have any constraints of cost or or weight or the normal kind of things that they would consider when they're making a lens, which made it very expensive, but you're not sacrificing quality at all with it. It really looks fantastic and the images are just amazing. Size claimed uh, medium format quality. I, I thought that was always kind of like a weird thing to, to claim in the marketing material, but I guess they were just trying to convey to photographers that it was really, really special, which they accomplished. They did make it very special. It has a very unique rendering, very unique contrast, very unique colors, and just everything about it really stands out. As far as lenses go, this is actually a lens that's gonna give you some very unique rendering. It's not gonna um, be a placebo. It's gonna give you something and the a little bit different. the other thing that I really like about the Zeiss Otis line in general is like when you have it, you know that you have the best lens out there that you can get from Zeiss with the money and that there isn't something else out there that's going to make a better image. And when you hold this up to your eye, that you're going to be making the best image that you can with this equipment. And you never, ever feel like, I wish I had more. Put this on your camera, forget about it. You're not going to get anything better and just go ahead and shoot. And then you can stop worrying about gear. All right, so here's what you get with a four thousand dollar lens. You got this really, <laughs> <laughs> you got this really unique um, sun flare on the left side of this image. It uh, turns out really good. It doesn't uh, ghost out the whole image or anything. Sometimes with uh, cheaper lenses, you will just kind of get this like um, overall like hazy look. And this has a really unique rendering, and you can still see that the eye is really in focus. And so, yeah, it works out really good for pictures like this. It still has that nice glow on it, but. Yeah, and not only are you getting nice sun flares and nice uh, chromatic aberration control, you're also getting beautiful bokeh. So this is at 1.4, um, real late at night actually. Like So I just used a little bit of ambient light. This is at the very end of twilight. And yeah, as you can see in the background there, the bokeh is really nice. It's not too too like soft and like commercially, but it is, uh, you know, it just has a really, really unique uh, combination between like, the sharpness of... Um, of the, of the subject and uh, the background has a really nice fall off and yeah you can really just tell that uh, she is sharp and the bat and the background still looks really nice which is a problem that you have with uh, some lenses when they're really sharp and uh, you just don't have the nicest bokeh sometimes it's really artistic yeah and then um here here's some more bokeh so you have a little bit of swirl on the side there and uh, you have a really sharp uh, eye there but I mean I would say that uh, this lens is a bit bitey at times it's a little bit too sharp for portraits so if you're uh, buying this lens you might want to just kind of uh, know that you're gonna have to do some retouching I did a little bit of retouching on this image but yeah like it's a little bit uh, sharp for my yeah, yeah a little bit sharp for my taste still yeah it's yeah. a sweet lens so here is a shot that I did uh, probably right when I received it and this was an engagement shoot obviously and I shot this pretty wide since it's a 55 millimeter lens and all um, there's basically no chromatic aberration in this lens most of the time, and if it is, it's very manageable. It's never something that you have to like spend a lot of time in Lightroom trying to fix or fear of losing part of your image. Um, also, I really like the whimsy kind of style that it, it portrays at 1.4. I feel like I can always shoot it wide open, and it would never, I would never lose sharpness wherever I'm trying to focus the lens. Um, on this photo here, this was a shot I did with. Uh, model friend of mine, Jamie, we went out and did this one uh, in the reservoir and we were trying to make kind of like a cool whimsy yeah. Can I just where point she's out like how, kind of yeah. emerging from the water. This is a sort. really hard rendering for, for any lens and you can right. see how much she's, she still pops from the background. There's no chromatic aberration on the side of her. Yeah, and, and I tried it's to like, kind of, the, because yeah. this was shot with a Canon camera so it didn't have as much dynamic range so like I saw this scene and I was like this is going to be perfect with the color of her dress and stuff because most of the colors are pretty similar so it still can get a lot of dynamic range. Yeah, but she still really pops uh, from this background and yeah. yeah, it's it's a really impressive rendering. Yeah, I love that shot. Um, and here's another one I did with Jamie on uh, the same shoot, actually. And I, it just was really interesting in the repeating yeah. patterns. Look at the micro contra contrast in those trees yeah, right like there. Yeah, when you There's... get in there, it's just like amazing. And this yeah. is actually, this image itself is is made for a web size. So a lot of the clarity in it is actually gone. So you can't see it like you'd be able to see it as a full full image. But it's really, really sharp. Yeah, no chromatic aberration on the tree branches or anything. Yeah, all that stuff is pretty much gone with Otis. You don't really have to deal with chromatic aberration much. You just... Got to get the shot right, manual focus, you know?
Yeah, and uh, that's why you pay 4K for this lens. Uh, if you buy it new, you can right. find them used for like 2K. And uh, I think it's fun to own this lens at least once. If you, you can um, adapt it to tons of cameras. Like you could put it on pretty much anything out there. Yeah, it's gonna look really good on any, anything high megapixel. But if you don't, if you're at like 24 megapixels, don't be scared to, to buy it still because it still just has a really unique rendering. It's not yeah. all about the sharpness. And you can use it for years to come. So if you're at a 24 megapixel now and then like in the future you go up to a 50 or 100 megapixel camera you can still resolve a lot with it i think i regret selling this lens just because i feel like this is a lens that i could have had for decades and if i didn't want to buy like a different piece of gear and sell this off i think right. it would just be cool to own it for a really long time i feel like that's the reason that i sold it and a lot of people probably don't have it in their kit is it's worth an awful lot of money so you could sell it and get a big change in your kit but at the same time it's such an incredible lens and i definitely miss it yeah, there's not really anything uh, better than it still. Uh, it's it's just uh, top of the line. So if you're considering buying this, go ahead and do it. If, you, if you're not going to go into some sort of crazy debt or... Yeah, um, if the money's not a big yeah. deal and you don't mind having the manual focus, no weather ceiling and a really heavy lens that focuses at 270 degree rotation, boom, you're going to love your pictures.